So it's September the 8th, which uh, in the Donbass area, which Donetsk and Lugansk make up, is the Donbass Liberation Day. So this is when the Nazis were kicked out of the area by Soviet forces in World War II. It's also three days since the ceasefire started, and uh, it's largely held across the region. There have been a couple of violations, but so far no major fighting has broken out again. So we're going to speak to some people here to talk about the uh, memorial and also hear what they think about the ceasefire. Освобождая землю в этом году от таких же захватчиков, когда те, которые пришли к нам 71 год назад, ну, наверное, только сейчас я начинаю понимать, как тяжело было нашим дедам и прадедам строить жизнь, сеять, пахать, убирать, воевать, умирать за эту землю. Какая у них была любовь, ответственность за свои дома, за свои семьи, за эту страну. Claudia, do you see uh, the fight against Nazism in the 1940s similar to what uh, the DNR are fighting for here in, in uh, 2014? You know, the most important thing is that the people who know who they are, they are fascists. And in this war, brothers kill brothers. Because this is the side, the DNR, the Nazi Guard, and all the rest of us, we are all citizens of Ukraine. Are you, are you happy that a ceasefire is now in place and are you hopeful that it will continue? Естественно, мы рады любому перемирию. Мы думаем, что все-таки ну, народ решает, конечно, основное все, но в верхах должны они прийти, найти какой-то путь к примирению. Эта война должна остановиться, потому что гибнут и наши ребята, и с их стороны гибнут совсем невинные люди, тех, которых власть отправила воевать против нас. Его нету. Вчера, вчера, в субботу, сейчас я скажу, в субботу, да, было тихо днем, вечером началась стрельба. А вчера вообще с аэропорта у нас грады, нас буквально у нас стекла повылетали, понимаете? Это вранье по украинскому телевидению. Никаких русских оккупантов здесь нету, никаких здесь террористов нету. Нас убивает украинское правительство. Я лично эту ночь просидела в подвале. Грады, грады бьют по нас. We're currently driving with a small humanitarian convoy to the town of Ilovysk, which is to the southeast of Donetsk. It was the scene of very heavy fighting throughout August between Ukrainian and DNR forces, and it ended up with Ukrainian forces actually being surrounded near the town and uh, being forced to surrender and uh, flee the city. Some of those fleeing were caught in ambushes by DNR forces, uh, which we've seen the aftermath of. Uh, the town itself has been heavily damaged in the fighting, lots of destroyed buildings, and a lack of power, uh, food, and water. So this convoy uh, is a couple of big trucks. We're heading down there now to uh, watch them distribute some of those supplies to the residents. So what's the situation in the town now? Is there still water, gas, electricity? What's the situation with the food? Ну и вода потихонечку, где-то есть вода, где-то, ну я, не я слушаю, колодцев, говорю, много ну где, с колодцев, ну бежит еле-еле вода, ну много порывов. Мы три недели здесь жили, в этом бомбоубежище, даже не могли, ну, такое, моменты были, мы не могли высунуть, ну как по-русски нос, такое страшное, особенно вот эту сторону бомбили, тут и по нам стреляли, и тут вообще, тут, ну как говорится, ад, ад какой-то. Can you tell me who organized this humanitarian uh, convoy and how much material you're actually delivering to Ilovysk? Помощь идет из России непосредственно. 
значит, это донское казачество, землячество, российское землячество Донбасса. Значит, мы привозим, исходя из один паек на человека, туда входят значит, две банки тушенки, банка рыбной консервы, полкилограмма сахара, килограмм крупы и сгущенное молоко. Из расчета на неделю на человека. So the fighting in Elavais between the Ukrainians and the DNR lasted for up to three weeks. There was daily shelling from both sides and you can see the aftermath of that. There's loads of these sort of bombed out houses that have been also damaged by fire. Uh, we're in front of the train tracks and there's a, like a pedestrian footbridge that goes over the tracks here and that's been, uh, been collapsed. It's just like the whole place has kind of been devastated and this is why now the DNR having to come here in convoys to deliver food and aid. This is one of the schools in Ilovaisk and we've been seeing a lot of these which are markings uh, to point out where so unexploded munitions are, are still lying in the ground. This one looks maybe like a mortar shell and it's completely stuck in the concrete, the fins just hanging out. So again, you know, this school obviously isn't going to reopen anytime soon, but the civilians here are going to have to live with the cost of this fighting for a very long time. I have no idea what kind of rocket that is. I'm no munitions expert, but it's enormous. I mean, I don't want to go too close. As well as there being these tiny mortars that we've seen, there's also these massive, like, rockets. And uh, seems someone was growing a bit of weed by the garages, and luckily for them, the crop hasn't been destroyed. So after uh, months of both sides using artillery, there are hundreds, possibly thousands, of unexploded shells across the region. So now that there's a lull in the fighting, whilst the ceasefire is still holding, the DNR are in this area trying to blow up some of these unexploded shells to try and minimise the risk to civilians who are now coming back to their homes and finding these shells lying around. So the DNR have uh, rigged up one of these unexploded shells on the tracks with some explosives. Uh, they don't seem too interested in uh, diffusing the shell, but they'd rather just destroy it instead. So now they've told us to try and, uh, well, to head a bit further back, where they're now going to blow it up, so we've got to take some cover. So they, they're just sure. testing the connection of the wire to the, uh, the explosive. And then they're going to blow it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounded like it worked. <laughs> Could you just tell us what happened today with the explosive here on the tracks? Снаряд это заложили украинская армия. Значит, цель закладывала снаряда взорвать железную дорогу. Но не получилось. Вот первый взрыв у них. Но а второй не получился взрыв. Поэтому мы вынуждены были вытянуть этот снаряд с под рельс, тоже опасность определенная, как он поведет себя. Значит, я занимаюсь моя мирная профессия, преподаватель кафедры строительных машин. Это мальчики, они, собственно, это второй у них эпизод, когда они подрывают заряд. Они буквально я с ним занимаюсь неделю. Значит, заложите сюда побольше взрывчатки, взорвем, чтобы разбить. The first attempt with 200 grams of explosives didn't work, so now they're going to try with a kilo and a half of explosives to try and get rid of the shell. That was a lot bigger. So it seemed the second attempt to blow up the uh, artillery shell worked. It was there, now there's a big crater, but they're a bit unhappy because the explosion has damaged the, uh, the train power lines above it. They wanted to try and uh, keep that in one piece because obviously they want to get these tracks working again. So they've kind of screwed up a little bit on that part, but at least they've got rid of the explosives. управление Донецкой железной дороги за три дня пытается все это проверить, номинирование, где необходимо взорвать, восстановить. И на четвертый день должен пойти поезд 
бой Россия, Кавказ, Москва, через... Это узловая, собственно, станция Ялавайская.